so happy to be live with you today in this wonderful Friday afternoon. And I finally also gather my courage and uh, prepare my first life in English too. And because we are Friday afternoon and uh, we think about our weekend projects and we may think that, uh, okay, what I'm going to read for the weekend, what, uh, what should I do, where should I go? I would like to recommend you a great book, a book that was my wake up call. This is the E-Meet Revisited. E-Meet is Entrepreneur Meet. Why most small business don't work and what to do about it by Michael E. Gerber. This is the world guru for small businesses. And why did I like this book? I remember the day I find it out. I was in a train. So I download the book from Amazon. I say, I'm going to read. I was laughing so much. The book is full of funny examples and it's full of learning points that are very, very, very useful before you start your own business. That's a book that you have to read. If you think about starting your own business one day, you will learn plenty of things. But let's see more. I remember when I, when I purchased it, I was in a period of my life where I was thinking, okay, everyone, I'm working in accounting, everyone tells me, uh, if you want to set up your company, you live in Luxembourg, finance is very popular, so do it as an accountant, create your accounting company. But I was thinking, mm, I don't feel like doing this all my life. And this book was actually what I needed to realize that, no, I won't do it. Because the book fights against the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial myth. This myth says that technical knowledge combined with a good idea, it's going to bring you automatically to success, which is not always true. In the book, I also learned about the three stages of business. The business has a three stages, like a human being. It's infancy, adolescence, and maturity. When you start your own business, you are at the infancy stage. You are very enthusiastic. You are still in your comfort zone because you do the same thing as uh, you used to do at your job. You just do it for yourself. And in this phase, you identify yourself with your company as a business owner. So you start to work, you have a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, but at some point you just get tired. You get tired, you get exhausted and you think, okay, I'm going to hire someone to help me. Especially a lot of business owners, they get confronted with the paperwork, with the accounting side. So they say, I'm not able, I won't want to learn, I'm just going to hire someone. And when you decide to hire someone, you get to the adolescent stage, you get to the yellow stage. And you hire someone, you have someone in your team, but because you are too tired, you don't feel like managing these people enough. You don't feel like uh, controlling it. You, you manage it more by abdication than by delegation. And because you don't get a lot of control on your figures, for example, on your paperwork, that may lead you to failure as a business owner. There are plenty of businesses failing at this stage, more than 80% of the business created. In order to get to the maturity stage, to the red one, you need to plan it as soon as possible in advance. Even before you open the company, you need to plan it because this maturity stage is the one where your company will be able to work and to produce without you, without you being there physically every day. And for people, for businesses who wants to develop until the maturity stage. The business owner needs to know that 
the business has three personalities. It's not enough to be good technically. That doesn't bring you necessarily to success. You need to think into account that there are three personalities. The first one is the orange one, the, the flashy entrepreneur, the real entrepreneur, the one with the vision, the one that thinks, he thinks, he innovates, he designs, he's curious, he thinks about how can I be different from someone else? How can I, uh, who are my customers? How can I find them? How can I keep them? But because this entrepreneur vision, he's too curious sometimes. He may go into chaos. So he needs someone to say, okay, guys, slow down, slow down. Let's filter a little bit your ideas. Let's organize a bit. And that's the manager role. That's the second hat of the business owner, the manager. He's there to organize and also to take care of the paperwork. But there is no business without the technical guy. The technical guy should be there with his know-how. He's the doer one. He's the one that he's always frustrated because of the entrepreneur, too large vision, because of the manager being too organized. But this technical guy, being good technically, it doesn't mean that you can run a business. If you say that you're going to start your business just because you are good in your field and you can just set up a company, a legal structure and start the business, it's like creating a job for you. It's better to have a job often. It may lead you directly to failure. failure. You need to think that you need to have all those three hats, entrepreneur, manager, and technical. And if you don't have them, you need to have someone in your team or to get to bring someone in your managing team that can, uh, can help you with this. And before you start your business, also in the planning part, if you want to start a business that goes you to maturity, you need to think, why I'm doing this. Do I do it because I want to get rid of my boss or because um, I want to, to bring value to people? I want to make more money. I want to travel more. I want to be more flexible. Why do you do it? That's a very important question because also in the book, so Emit Entrepreneur Revisited in the book, the author gets in contact with a lady that set up a pie bakery and she was struggling on the daily basis. She was struggling with the operation. She was struggling with the paperwork. She was getting tired in the infant stage of the, her business. And then she said, OK, I'm going to hire an accountant. I'm going to hire Joan. He's a specialist in accounting. But Joan, it's an employee, so he he may not be always motivated. She was too tired to, to control John, to sit down with John and work with John and see, okay, what's the vision? So the author stepped in and he asked her a good question. Why did you start this business in the first place? And she said, oh, I love pies. My grandmother used to cook pies and they were so good. And the smell really reminds me of, of my childhood. So I said, yeah, but if you love pies, you don't have to start a business for this. You can also have a job. So either you go and get a job or let's sit together and see how we can have this business work for you, even if you are not there every day and still enjoy the smell and the taste of the pies. So this is what this book teaches us, the Emit Entrepreneur, why most build small businesses don't work and what to do about it. That teaches us that when you build a business, it needs to be like a prototype. There is the first business that you have, but don't lose track of the fact that 
this business can grow. One day, from one prototype, you can have a national channels of business. You can run other business. It would be exactly the same. The, what you need to do from the beginning is think how you can duplicate your system, how you can duplicate your procedures, how you can um, uh, make a similar company that can be run without you, but with the same success as if you were there or even better. And the author thinks about the franchise, which is uh, when you think about the franchise, it's the business idea that the franchisor got and he managed to multiplicate to, to replicate it, to replicate it and to sell it to franchisee, to other people who will do exactly the same job with the same success for the client. And when you think about franchise, you first think about McDonald's. That's the one of the biggest franchise in the world. And this is what this book teaches you that when you, from the first day you work, you need to work on your business, not in your business. If you are too stuck in the operational stuff, you will never see the, the big picture because you are getting tired. You just try to hire someone and get rid of, uh, of the accounting on paperwork without necessarily controlling on this. So you will never get to the maturity stage unless you review your priorities. And this is why I said, OK, at, at that moment when I read, read this book, I said, OK, I don't want to start my accounting business because I don't feel like doing. I would be too stuck in the operational side. I'm too technical about it. I don't have the other views. OK, let's develop the other views. And this is why I thought about network marketing. This is something to consider. If you think, feel that you are too technically involved in your business, maybe network marketing is, this is something to consider. For me, it's fascinating because I get a little bit of distance from my technical knowledge, but in the network marketing, I find a system. I find procedures that can be learned and replicated. I can learn how to do business, which is great. I, it can be applicable anywhere in any, any context. And I also have a very good community that supports me and helps me. And all this, while not being technically involved, too technically involved, developing my organization, developing my entrepreneurial skills, my uh, selling skills, my people skills, and all this using high quality products with a small, very small investing investment compared to the franchise, which can be quite, uh, uh, quite costly. So thank you very much for being with me until here. And if you have not found the idea of book or the project that you want to do for the weekend, think about this small book and you may learn something out of it, especially if you are a budding entrepreneur or if you think about starting your own company. Thank you very much. I wish you a very nice and restful weekend and think advantage of all the time you have either to rest or to plan ahead. Bye bye. Have a nice day.